Grade Group Number 20. My name is Stephanie George. This is Christopher Ramos, and this is Rafael Mastro. Our topic is on heel glute gears, and here we go. A brief introduction on vehicle gears, or gears in general. A gear is a component that contains teeth. It's then meshed with another component that has teeth to make a force. Well, not necessarily a force, but to move another component. So when a gear is applied a force, it's going to move the component that has it's meshed with to create an output force. The first type of gears that we were introduced were wooden gears. Wooden gears were used on water wheels. And then later on in the 18th century, by the British Industrial Revolution, we were introduced the first types of metal gears. The metal gears, when they were introduced, changed the world completely. Industrial helical gears are very similar to spur gears. The difference is that spur gears have 90 degree teeth, while the helical gears have angle to teeth, normally ranging from 30 to 45 degrees. The helix shape, which is the angle, creates a greater surface contact and stronger teeth. These helical gears are used for smoother and, are, are smoother and quieter, and they're also suggested for applications that contain heavier loads and are quicker. Some materials used to create helical gears are steel, bronze, and aluminum. I'm now going to introduce Stephanie, where she's going to continue on the presentation. There are three types of helical gears. The first one is the cross helical gear, which are used for non-parallel and non-intersecting um, components. The second one is double helical gears, which is a cylindrical gear where it uses, um, made, it uses a mating, where the teeth uses a mating gear. The third one is the herring. Um, the herringbone gears, where it's a type of um, double helical gear, and it uses a right a right hand helical and a left hand helical, where it's co it's at opposite ends to each other, which will create a V shaped um, surface around the gear, and there will be a thin gap in between the, the right hand um, right hand he helix and the left hand helix. Uh, there is also the selection process of a helical gear is very important. So, like I said before, there, we have to determine the right hand and left hand helical helix. Um, also, the, the strength of the gear is very important, where we do bending stress and surface durability, tipping or chipping hazards too. Also, the ratio between the teeth on the teeth on the gear is very important, and also the rotations of where the gears are um, functioning at. Also, the thrust is another important selecting process because the thrust is the driving force of the gear. Um, hel helical gears are used in various applications, like the car transmission, steel industry, mining, rubber, textile, and medical industries. Um, this is a, car car a helical gear used in a car transmission system. And then Rafael will... Um, talk about the examples of helical gears. Hello. So, helical gears, some of the uh, widely used examples, as uh, Stephanie just covered, are also gear pumps and parallel shaft. Um, these are very simple machinery that they pretty much have uh, an input horsepower that with the gear ratios and um, tooth ratios, we can actually calculate very accurately based on our input, what outputs and forces our gears can uh, withstand, actually. So the design alternatives for, uh, for this project, pretty much, it's uh, once we have selected the pinion and the gear set, um, based on one selection, we can have different uh, alternatives. For example, the first one, it's when we have a pinion that has undercut and therefore the pinion and the gear have to operate um, a little further from their standard working center distance. Therefore you have chipping hazards, um, bending stresses or above average and they're not within the allowable stresses. Now we look we take a look at design alternative number two. The pinion in this case has an increased addendum which this means that it eliminates the undercut actually, but still they have to work um, since the gear is it's not changed, it's a standard gear, 
then they have to work at an offset distance and we have the chipping hazard again. Now, design alternative number three, we adjusted, we adjusted the pinion and dentin distance, eliminating the undercut, but also we reduced the addendum of the gear. Again, we increased the pinion and we decreased the gear. And now they can both work under a standard uh, center between the two. It, uh, it's preferable this way. The allowable stresses will always be better. And therefore, your, the life of your system will be longer and the teeth will not deteriorate. Our proposed design, of course, will be design alternative number three. The distribution you see right here of the stresses, this is how it will look like. Again, pinion increase addendum gear, reduce the addendum so they can work at a, oper a standard operating distance. This is how you uh, build. The, the actual gear. It's the same process as the, as the spur gear. The only difference is the helix angles. And because of the helix, now we have a transverse component of the pressure angle, a normal component, um, actual components and the forces, etc. So with this, we conclude our presentation. We want to say bye-bye in uh, the name of our team. Bye. <laughs> Goodbye.